Hi guys, welcome to another video. I hope everyone's been keeping well. Uh, just jumped in the car today. I'm actually on my way to Queenstown. Uh, about, about an hour's drive for me to get to Queenstown. I'm actually going to catch up with another landscape photographer, a, uh, a New Zealand based landscape photographer. A guy by the name of Ewan Dunsmuir. Uh, and if you're a bit of a YouTube follower of landscape photographers, uh, you might be aware of Ewan. He puts out some good content on YouTube. Uh, we caught up last week just for a bit of a chat, and uh, he's, uh, he's down in the South Island for a few weeks, just doing a bit of a tour around and doing a bit of photography, and we've agreed to, uh, to catch up today, go out for a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a shoot this afternoon. Uh, there's some nice clouds around, so fingers crossed we might actually get a, a bit of a sunset we'll see how it goes um, but yeah really just catch up a bit of a social get-together um, a bit of a shoot hopefully we might get some good photos and we'll just have a bit of a chat um, I'll get Ewan on video and we'll, we'll just have a bit of a talk about what he's up to and um, I think he might uh, he might also have a bit of a chat to me for his YouTube as well so that'll be good um, I've been sort of locked in the house the last few days, three or four days now, really working hard to get my new uh, photo editing tutorial finished and I finally got that finished last night and that's now available for purchase on my website now. It's been a long time in the making that tutorial, I've put a, a huge amount of work into it. Really what it is, it is a really simple editing technique. Uh, that delivers um, a really high quality professional level image and once you get the technique down pat it's it's not too in-depth it's quite easy to learn easy to follow and uh, the, the technique should only really take about 15 minutes so uh, check that video out I'll put a link below so you can go and check it out uh, have a look at my tutorials um, it's a great tutorial, I put a lot of work and a lot of thought into it and uh, I'm sure you'll like it and I'm sure you'll learn a lot from it. Uh, it's been a pretty lean year for me this year due to the, uh, the COVID situation so unfortunately I haven't been able to, uh, to run my, my workshops so it's certainly been a, a challenge financially for me this year so uh, the tutorial uh, is certainly something that I'm hoping uh, might help me pay a few bills over the next few months um, So yeah, check it out. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. All right. I'll get down to uh, Concentrating on the road here and uh, we'll check back in with you soon uh, When we get to Queenstown Okay guys, so here we are, we've just uh, hiked up to uh, quite up high above here above Skipper's Saddle which is down below us here, I'll show you that in a second. 
not really that far to walk up here but it's just very steep <laughs> and when you're unfit like me um, it's a pretty tough slog to be honest I think my camera bag is about 18 kilos so um, <clears throat> it's taken me five or so minutes to get my breath back since I've got up here but you can see behind me here the view is pretty pretty stunning view here you can see that road sort of winding down through the valley there so that's um it pretty much makes its way down to Skipper's Canyon don't know whether you've heard of Skipper's Canyon but it's a pretty I guess it's a kind of a notorious road um, single lane a little bit like those uh, movies you see on on TV where those buses are driving off the edges like you know a foot from the edge of a cliff the road down the canyons kind of like that uh, these little sort of four-wheel drive buses go down there and ferry people down to a jet boat ride on the shot over river down there uh, if you're game enough to do the drive it's um, definitely beautiful scenery down there so we're gonna stay here uh, shoot some images here you can see the clouds kind of just probably just sitting above the mountains there so haven't really thought about what I'm going to shoot yet but um, we'll work something out and um, we'll just take in the view we'll get back to you soon okay so I'm up here with uh, Ewan Dunsmuir Ewan, uh, Ewan's from the North Island Rotorua uh, if you look him up on YouTube I know I did talk about it before when we were driving over to Queenstown check him out on YouTube Ewan you're down here <laughs> third time on the South Island. Third time this time, yeah, yeah, it's yep. good. Um, so this trip so far, where have you been? Uh, for the last eight days, I uh, started off in Queenstown. Yeah. Went up the west coast, up to Lake Matheson. Yeah. Uh, back down through Harst, back to Wanaka and Hawea. Yep. Uh, back to Queenstown, uh, then down to Milford Sound. Yep. And Tiano. And back to Greenstone again, so um, it's a bit of a, a bit of a, oh, Mount Cook as well. I was at oh, Mount, Mount Cook. Cook, yeah. How <laughs> could I forget Mount Cook? Because you had a good sunrise or sunset Be at Tasman. Be yeah, beautiful sunset, uh, yeah. beautiful sunrise, beg your pardon, at uh, Lake Tasman. Got yeah. beautiful colours in the sky and managed to pick up that real aqua colour. Yeah. It's, it's was it because it changes colours there? It can be like like a almost a lighter blue or it can almost be a green. Is it more the? It's more the lighter blue this the blue, time, yeah. so, especially when the. the the skylight started to brighten, yeah. it popped. Yeah. Almost a really light aqua, which is really nice. Yeah. It's yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Spectacular place. It's good. I reckon it's Tasman Lake is like a world class. It's a world class world location class if it's right. Location. Location. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's right up there. Because I know that Hooker Valley on the other side gets talked about far more because it's a dramatic walk. Yeah. But it's a location. Yeah. Tasman is. Tasman's. Tasman's more consistent, I think, than yeah, Hooker. It is, yeah. Hooker doesn't always have the icebergs, um, whereas Tasman just about always, doesn't matter when you go there, you yeah. just about always get a good shot. Yep. So we've walked up, as I just said before, we're a place called Skipper's Saddle, which is high above Queenstown. Um, just over here to our left, we can actually see is uh, Coronet Peak Ski Field. So I'm not sure of the elevation we're at here, but it, it's definitely quite elevated because uh, the ski field is not very far from here and it's probably not much more elevated than where we are so um, certainly high a bit hard on the breath here <laughs> I think too just looking at the snow line Brett I don't know where the snow line sits just now but we're not far beneath the snow line no which no. probably tells us that we're up about 1500 meters I think I'd say somewhere yeah. around that yeah and it's often there's often snow here or there's <laughs> often snow down there oh, is there? at the at the um, the car park down there yeah so you and you use a uh, Pentax medium format. Medium format digital, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And just tell us a bit about your, um, I guess your history in photography. Like I know you said you've been shooting for quite a few years. More than I'd care to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And what you've sort of gone through, you've gone all around in a circle, really, haven't you? Yeah. I, I started off 35 mil film. Yeah. And then went on medium format film back in 1995. And I shot with uh, Zinza Bronick and Hasselblad uh, back then. And I, I joined the digital re revolution in 2005 and I couldn't keep up. Yeah. It was just uh, going from 3 megapixels to 8 to 10 yeah, to 11 yeah. to 12. To, yeah. And I came, uh, I, I got to the end of my tether with my 5D for what I was wanting to do, being big prints. Yeah. 
and ended up going back. I had to do an assignment over in the UK and needed a medium format digital for the client's requirements. And the only one I could get that was at a reasonable cost was the Pentax 645. So yeah. I've had that and I've never looked back. It's great. Love it. Good camera. Love it. Yeah, Love it. good camera. Love it. And that sort of leads me into the next question I was going to ask you. Like, um, I know you're a professional landscape photographer, it's your living. So, like for me, I guess my core income is photography workshops. That's sort of where I make my living when it's not 2020. <laughs> so where do you sort of, because you sort of go down a different path, don't you? Where go do you go sort down of make... limited, oh, limited edition prints. They yeah. have a slightly higher price point because yeah. they're a limited edition. So limited to 10 each print run. and. I do quite a lot of um, tutorials online with yep. Skype and stuff. Skype, Skype's a great tool. Yep. Uh, they do public talks as well. Yep. Do some sponsor jobs with some companies over in the States and yep. derive some income from that. So, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly prints, fine art prints. Yep. Um, it's hard though. It's a hard part of the business to push because the viewing platform now is online. Mm. So to convert an online tiny 8-bit JPEG that's tiny in size to something with a high price point, to something yeah. that's big in print, yeah. it's actually really difficult it to is. imagine. It is, it is. That's not an easy market. No, it's not. Yeah. But I'll tell you, that the stuff that you do with workshops, um, I've found this last eight to ten days tough. It is. <laughs> with the travel, the logistics, the Very getting tough. up in the morning, yeah. the sunset shoots, the scoping out new locations. Yeah. Yeah. And that's without clients this time, because yeah. that one had to be cancelled because of COVID. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's tough. Hat, hat off to you, man, for doing it all the time. It's, it's hard tough, work. Tough yeah, time. it is hard work. It's hard, eh? Yeah. I, I know at the start of this year, when the COVID thing first started, <laughs> i got to be honest, because the last sort of three years I'd worked just... I just didn't stop working yeah. for three years, you know, and I was... As much as it was good, like I travelled all over the world, I was I spent more time on aeroplanes and in airports than I did on the ground. Yeah. But um, the first couple of months of the COVID shutdown, I was <laughs> I was quite happy just sleeping until ten o'clock every day and just drinking coffee and watching TV. I was I hadn't done that for years, so it is tiring. You get really really tired. Yeah. Um, it's mentally it's hard because you you switched on from you know five o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock at night every day. Um, it's, it, well, it's funny too when you're travelling around because I know Elia Lacardi um, yeah. from the States, he, he's location independent. Yeah. So he's on the go 12 months every year. Yeah, that's pull on. Um, I don't know how he does that, but yeah. um, it's quite a challenge. Yeah, I know when I get to the end of the workshop season, so my workshop season goes from like March to sort of the beginning of December. Yeah. When I get to the, the beginning of December, I'm cooked. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I need, I'd take a month off without just take a month off there because anything after that because I guess for you you've got the winter market to get the sun yeah to get the, the snow sorry yeah but then in the summertime you've got a completely different captive market where there's well I haven't really worked that much in the summertime over the, the real mid you know the, the middle of summer I've sort of taken time off and just spent that having a holiday and catching up on all the admin and all that kind of stuff but this year uh, <laughs> I'll work this summer if I can yeah like and I did, I must admit, I did realise last summer being here in New Zealand, I did realise how much cool stuff there is to shoot, <laughs> yeah, to shoot in summer here. Like, there's a lot of wildflowers here that people don't even know yeah. about. Um, and some of the clouds in summer, are, you get those big lenticular clouds that yeah. light up over the mountains in the evenings. And So th there can be some cool stuff in the summer as well. Right, so uh, before we wrap up and, and start shooting, there's just a couple of final questions I, I wanted to ask you. I was thinking about this um, the other night. Well, the first question's two questions in one, really. It is, um, what's your favourite place you've photographed in the world that you've been? And leading into the, the same question, I guess, is a um, place that you, maybe you haven't been that you want that you really want to go and photograph. Yep. I th there, there's been lots of, of good places, I think, Brett, for different reasons. Um, I think the one that's been consistent over the last little while, and we're probably in it, and that's got to be New Zealand. Yeah. I think the landscape's so diverse, it's powerful. Yeah. This is my third trip down here, and it just it blows me away every time. Yeah. It's simply incredible. Yeah. Places I haven't been that I want to photograph. Um, really want to visit the Italian Dolomites. Yeah. Yep. Patagonia is another one, but yeah. Italian yeah. Dolomites, I think, and yeah. probably 
well, Lofoten Islands in, in, in Norway if you can get that light right. Yeah. But I think yeah. it's a very light right dependent location now. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, last time I was there, uh, got talking to a few locals and they were quite surprised that we were there doing photography in the winter. Oh, okay. Because they said that's the worst weather and, <laughs> and the worst life. And a few locals we spoke to there said that their autumn, which is sort of September, October, yep. they, they said that's the best weather. Ah. So if I was going back there, that's probably what I'd go. Oh, nice. Yeah. Not as much snow, but better weather and yeah. probably better, more consistent light. Uh, final question. Your favourite place in New Zealand in terms of photography? This is pretty cool, um, but I th it's a hard one. It's a hard one. I think, though, you're probably living in it, and that's Wanaka. Mm -hmm. Wanaka is uh, it's probably my favourite location in New Zealand, not just for photography. As a place. Yeah. yeah. It's just incredible. I think you can yeah. do so much there in such a short yeah. space of time. Wanaka is stunning with that white snowy mountains in the winter time, it's simply divine. It is. It's incredible. Yep. Good choice. Yep, it's good. <laughs> All right, well let's, uh, we're gonna wrap this up now and get the cameras out and come here. We are actually photographers, so um, <laughs> we're gonna take some photos now. So <laughs> let's see how we go with this light. The light's a little bit tricky. It's, uh, well, there isn't any real good light, but um, I think the best light we're gonna get is probably right about now, more so than in another 40 minutes or half an hour, so we'll get down to business. So I've got a composition framed up here, vertical shot of all things. Um, so I'll show you what I've got here. 24 millimeters using the 24 to 70 mil lens. Got this spear grass in the foreground here, which I actually don't mind actually. I think it's quite nice. Um, so we're gonna focus stack that. We'll take four frames. Uh, one, I'm just gonna bring my histogram up so I can see. I'm probably gonna shoot it about three quarters of a stop underexposed so we'll focus stack that take one shot there uh, another one out a little bit further another one on the road down there that's three and then we'll take one more for the mountains at the back and um, We'll see how that goes. I think it'll be okay, actually. One more shot, I'll take a photo of four fingers. Let's see how that one turns out. landscape shot framed up here um, the light this evening's not amazing <laughs> actually there isn't any light to be honest but um, I don't mind this shot I've got this rock in the foreground I've kind of zoomed in a little bit I think I'm in at 35 millimeters uh, the road winding in from the left hand corner the mountains at the back uh, I've got a grad filter on the top there just uh, reposition that. I'm using a circular polarizer as well, which is making a little bit of difference in the shadows. Uh, not a huge difference, but a little bit. So I think I'm probably only going to take two shots this evening. The vertical shot I took before and probably this one. Uh, I was thinking about shooting a pano, but I don't think I'll worry about that. Um, 
that's for another day. So I'll get this shot and uh, get this one in the bank and then I think I'll leave it there. So again I'll focus stack it because this, uh, this rock in front of me here is actually again only about 15 feet in front of the camera. So we'll get a shot on that. I'm using F8 this time. F8 this time, F8 11 last time, uh, no particular reason. <laughs> I probably prefer F8 if I'm being honest, I just find it a bit sharper um, than F11. And when you focus stacking, it's fine. Some people I think really overthink photography. Um, for me, I certainly don't do that. Uh, just turn up and shoot what's in front of me and just go on instincts really. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's okay. So four frames, this one. Um, since shooting this, I've already changed my mind. I'll take one more shot. So I might try a more compressed shot where I zoom in a little bit more. Uh, I'll stick to this lens, the 2470. We'll see how we go. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel so you can keep up to date with my future photography adventure videos. Right, hey guys, that's a wrap on today. Uh, getting pretty close to dark now. I didn't get a lot of light out the back here, but um, probably still managed to get a couple of decent shots. And it's not always about the photography. It's uh, certainly very, very beautiful place here, and just to stand here and just take it in. That's good enough. We don't need photos. We take photos with our eyes, so um, that's all we need to do. So I'll wrap it up. We'll show you a couple of pictures, and um, thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and take care. If you'd like to help fuel my future photography adventures, head to the About page on my YouTube channel and there you can buy me a coffee. That'd be sincerely appreciated. Thank you.